What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. Star Wars is back. Star Wars. And you know, I've been a little up and down on their shows recently. I was excited for the Acolyte. Didn't love the trailer, but let's see what they got. Last night, a Jedi was murdered. All right, here's the premise. An investigation into a shocking crime spree pits a respected Jedi master against a dangerous warrior from his past. As more clues emerge, they travel down a dark path where sinister forces reveal it's not all as it seems. The first two episodes are dropping tonight at nine. I got to see the first four, and so I'm a little further along in the journey, and some of those reveals that come later on I'm aware of. Maybe that enhances my experience just a bit. But let's talk about the first two in more detail without spoilers. Tiptoe in that line. I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? There are even things I have to tiptoe around the cast that I don't know have been revealed. So we'll start there. Amanda Stenberg is really good. A dynamic performance where you really see two different sides of her. And I enjoyed that, right? Uh, there's a, a portion of the show that relies heavily on the tension between she and another character because it is kind of a story between a master and his Padawan, but it goes a lot deeper than that. And episode three, which obviously we're not going to hit on a lot today, is a lot of that backstory. And so if you watch the first two episodes tonight and you feel something lacking, something missing, you may just want to hold on for another episode. And that was my issue with episodes one and two. It's like, I don't feel fully connected to these characters. I get they're establishing a mystery here, and it's a very intense mystery. It's one that goes deeper than I think a lot of people will anticipate. And it kind of forces you to look at the Jedi in a different light. Now, in the prequels, we were told certain things about the Jedi to where by the time we got to Revenge of the Sith, we didn't know if we could fully trust them or not, even though they are uh, probably the most trustworthy people in the galaxy. This show explores that a bit deeper to where you do kind of hit on that mysterious side of the Jedi a bit more, right? You're not looking at them in the exact same light as we were with the original Luke trilogy. And so that adds some depth to their side. And this is taking place hundreds of years or a hundred years before the Skywalkers in general. And so you're not relying heavily on nostalgia or cameos just yet. I'm sure it's coming. Uh, but at this point, after four episodes, they haven't fully relied on that. Whereas I think in some other Star Wars shows, they've relied on that too heavily and it's taken away from the main narrative. You don't get that in the Acolyte. Right now, you're just exploring the ins and outs of the Jedi, but also where Stenberg's character comes from, where she falls in this entire equation. And again, I, I implore you, episode three gives you all of that depth that you need for those characters, which made, in turn, episode two for me uh, a lot better. Liar! Now, you also have Lee Jung Jae as one of those Jedi Masters who is the most interesting character in this show because of some things that you can tell he's holding in in the first few episodes. And while even I haven't fully gotten that reveal yet, you can tell there's something coming, some things that he keeps hinting at and teasing, and it's almost like he's holding something close to the vest to not hurt others around him. I have no clue what that is, but with a show and a name like Acolyte that's exploring more of the dark side and why they're after this character in the first place, I feel like whatever that reveal is going to be is going to be heavy, and it may change some things or how we perceive uh, the Jedi in general. So I'm excited for that, but I'm also excited to learn more about him. You have Carrie Ann Moss, Daphne Keene from Logan, Jodie Turner-Smith, so a good cast all the way around, but it's like, are they going to put these characters in specific categories and give them tropes and uh, try to shoehorn some things in there that just make you feel like they need to move the story along? Because that's how I felt about some of these Star Wars shows. And admittedly, there are moments. Man, I wish we could move this story along. I'm interested and I'm along for the ride, but uh, the momentum, it almost loses steam as we're going in the first few episodes. And by the time uh, you get to some of these reveals, it's entertaining, but did it take too long to get there? And did it pull in my fascination after that first amazing scene in the first episode? But after that, it's a lot of slow buildup. Here's what I'll say about the writing. I'm up and down on it so far. So the overall illusion that they're trying to create 
is working. And I like the mystery at hand, but this could go south very quick once we get the reveal. There's an idea that I have in my head. Okay, if they go this direction for the ultimate reveal, then I'm going to be satisfied. But if they do the thing that I think they may do, uh, it could tank this show very fast. And so the writing itself is up and down. I think overall it is working, but some specific moments and instances and dialogue and characters, I'm just like... I don't feel the depth that they're trying to create, and not to put Andor on this huge platform, but Andor was spectacular. A lot of that had to do with the writing and really the visuals of the show, which you get neither of here. And so this feels more conventional. It has that look and feel that the other Star Wars shows have to it, which at this point is fine, but I'm not super excited about it. Oh shit, I'm sorry. And they're also kind of pushing with the marketing. Oh man, these Jedi moments and the battles and some of this fight choreography, it's going to be spectacular. And you get some moments in the first two episodes, but it's not really that action-packed of a show just yet. It's relying more on the mystery that they are building, which is cool, but at the same time, it's not this crazy action-packed show that I think a lot of people are hoping for or expecting, and the battles that we do get, they're fine, but similar choreography that we've seen a thousand times before. Here's what I do enjoy about this story so far. We're kind of dealing with the rise of the Sith, and in turn, we'll get to see some of these imperfections with the Jedi that I mentioned a bit earlier, but if we go deeper into that idea and we expand upon the Star Wars lore in this show with this tone without having to heavily rely on those nostalgic elements, I think that's going to bring a lot to the table. And I feel like Acolyte will succeed if that's what ultimately happens. But at the same time, this is one of those ideas that could fall apart uh, extremely fast within the final few episodes. And because of that, I don't know if I fully have confidence to say this show is working so far because of those inconsistencies, because of the up and down nature of the pacing so far. I enjoy the exploration that we've gotten with some of these characters, and admittedly, there is a bit of a cliffhanger at the end of episode four that had me like, all right, I'm in. Let's see. What <laughs> yeah, how dare you leave us off on that, man? <gasps> but a lot of that has to do with all of this culminating and building, and by the time we get there, you feel like we are about ready for a payoff. So will we get that? That's my question. That's why I can't give a grade or a score for this show just yet because a lot of it relies on those final few episodes. And so for the four episodes that I've seen, there are some very quality elements to the show, some interesting characters, also some characters that don't get a lot of depth, that don't get the buildup that I think we are looking for, and some ideas that are setting you up for something great, but could ultimately end in a flat failure. This is the worst. Here's what I'll say. Based on the trailer, it was better than I anticipated. While I like the characters more in Ahsoka, I am way more compelled with this mystery that they're setting up, with this storyline, with exploring things we've never explored before. And so I'm more into this show than I was Ahsoka, to be honest with you. But if you're looking for something new and completely different in Star Wars, that's not this. This is something that's going to work if you have been a fan of some of the elements you've seen so far, but you're looking for something that feels just a little bit more fresh. Before I give you my final thoughts, do you like me talking Star Wars? I just haven't been as enthused about it as of late. Well, the Acolyte ultimately turned that around, and if you want to check out our podcast called Movie Mode, the Movie Mode pod, search us up on all podcasting platforms, YouTube, and this week we might talk about the Acolyte just a little bit. This series simultaneously feels unique and familiar as it provides an interesting exploration of the Jedi before the time period that we know all too well, yet it only scratches the surface of some fascinating ideas. There is a mysterious buildup that has my attention, and it is a series that gets better with each episode, but a lot of this is dependent on where it ultimately goes. The visual style is lackluster, but there are some captivating moments. Shout out to the performances from Sinberg and Lee Shang jae for stealing the show so far. This is at least a story with a ton of potential to keep improving, but will it take the easy way out? That's my question, and that's that's where we're going next. But I'm curious, once episodes one and two come out, let me know your thoughts, how you feeling so far. Can you wait on episode three, or are you just tapping out after the first two? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next Star Wars video, hopefully, unless I retire.